Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna go ahead and get started, it's two o'clock. Um, welcome to Social Gov's um, one hour virtual session on reaching veterans in the digital space. I'm Gabrielle Pratt, I'm GSA Senior Media Advisor and I am lead for Social Gov, the federal government social media community of practice. I'd like to remind you all that this session is being recorded. We'll be chatting out the link uh, when it's, once the video is ready, uh, probably within a couple weeks. I'll post that to the listserv. If you have questions today during the session for our presenters, you're welcome to put those right into the chat box and um, they have uh, agreed to take them live. So if you have questions, chat them as they come up. We'll be uh, taking questions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, please welcome Tanner Iskra. He's the host of VA's podcast, Born the Battle. He's a United States Marine Corps veteran who served as an Intel analyst and OIF Free, and later as a combat video photographer, videographer photographer. During his military career, he deployed to OIF-3 as well as Romania, Latvia, Bulgaria, Germany, France, and Spain as part of the Black Sea Rotational Force. After leaving active duty, Tanner was a senior post-production editor with NASCAR Productions. Tanner is a graduate of the Cronkite School of Jour Journalism at Arizona State University with a Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication and Media Studies. He also holds a certificate in military motion media from the Newhouse School of Journalism at Syracuse University. Joining the Department of Veterans Affairs in October 2018, Tanner is a video producer with the digital media engagement team focusing on producing, editing, and shooting content that tells the veteran story. You should probably start to cut that down in the future. <laughs> no, we like to hear it. No, no. Uh, also, please welcome uh, Bronwyn Emmett. She leads the Digital Outreach Initiative for the National Veterans Outreach Office within the VA Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs. For six years, she was Program Manager of Explore V8 Outreach. The program resulted in over 14 million visits to the VA website and over 2 million application starts. Today, Bronwyn continues to leverage partnerships to promote and execute social media events that focus on VA priorities. Uh, joining us virtually today, we have Tim Hudick. He joined VA in December 2013 and is the communications lead for the Veterans Experience Office. He previously worked on VA's digital media engagement team and is now focused on the communications experience for veterans, their families, caregivers, and survivors. Tim, a Chicagoland native, served in the U.S. Marine Corps as an intelligence analyst and reside, resides in the Tampa, Florida area with his wife, Sherry, in their Rhodesian Ridgeback Ridge boot, which uh, we may be seeing a preview of later on. <laughs> Dominique Ramirez uh, is also joining us online. He joined VA in 2013 and has supported a wide array of activities within the VA's Office of Public Affairs. As a web developer, he helps manage pages across the va.gov domain. He also manages the, the Vantage Point and VA Insider blogs. As the intern program manager for the digital media engagement team, Dominic leads a team that helps create content for Vantage Point, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. Dominic has a bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of San Diego and a master of science and in information technology from Southern New Hampshire University. Prior to his work in the federal government, Dominique spent tw uh, 10 years in the U.S. Navy. Thank you, everybody from VA joining us, and a special thank you to the veterans uh, who served our country. We're going to go ahead and kick it, kick, it, kick it off here. Tanner, tell us, how do you uh, outreach to veterans in the digital space? Uh, with, with the podcast, um, it's kind of unique. You know, we get, um, we get reviews and ratings on, on podcasts, um, so... One way that I directly engage with the audience is that I actually read every single review on the podcast and respond to them. Um, it seems to to generate more and more people want to people want to hear their own um, their own comments. So uh, and and what I think about them and and, and and how I engage with them. So it, it's almost like if I do one, it's going to gener generate a, another one. Um, even if I mention that hey, I didn't get no comments this week, but I do look forward to getting more. Um, so that's how I uniquely engage with our audience on the podcast. Um, you know, and, and uh, Tim could talk about, uh, you know, there is a, as far as other social media, we're actually doing right now almost like a think tank about how to better engage our, our audience on social media. And they're right, Tim. Mm -hmm. That's you. right. Sorry. <laughs> talk about what, what we're doing out there uh, with, uh, with the service recovery. Sure. So 
as many of you can probably relate, and I know judging by looking at who's on, a lot of you have the same problem is how do you engage with people on social media who are asking you questions and where does it go? What are you doing with it? It's more than just listening. You, get, you need to be able to act at the same time. So overall in VA, it's um, what the second largest federal agency, close to 400,000 employees, 160 sites, um, physical sites across the country with upwards of what, 300 social media platforms. I think so you think about it. Yeah. All right. It's, yeah. it's an astounding number. It's huge. So how, what connects all of those together and how do you ensure that not one veteran, their family member, caregiver, or survivor slips through the crack when they're asking a question? And especially in our cases, and I know a lot of your cases, some of these questions are dire. Some of them are crisis. They could relate to homelessness or suicide. So we have a really large, very large and important responsibility to make sure no one uh, does fall through the crack and we get people the, the information they need at the time they need it. So what, what Tanner's alluding to is uh, the last uh, couple of days, we brought in a lot of subject matter experts from across the VA to think about, number one, whose responsibility is it to respond? Is it that individual facility or is there going to be a team somewhere to make sure that we are responding to all of our customers' inquiries and concerns that are coming in? And two, how do we make sure we're not duplicating efforts? How do we make sure that you know, the location in Arizona and the hospital in Arizona is not responding to something at the same time headquarters, the veteran crisis line, there's a congressional inquiry, there's, you know, there's so many ways to access VA. So we need to really pinpoint it and make sure that we have a seamless response across the board and that's all for our customers' experience. Okay. Um, talk to me, can you, can you talk about to the audience about vSignals? What is it? How do you employ it? And, and, and then how do you use that to target the digital audience that we have? Sure, so uh, V Signals is short for Veteran Signals. It's a new program, well, relatively new. We started in 2017 and it's kind of unique for federal government where we are asking our customers, how do they, how do they rate us on a, on a trust scale? What, is it, what could we improve? Do they have recommendations for us? And um, again, our, our uh, administration and veteran affairs is unique where we have lots of individual appointments and we have lots of interactions. So every time, not every time, about 20% of all, uh, let's say medical appointments, for example, a veteran goes in, has their medical appointment within a couple hours to days, they get a survey back digitally. And that's what vSignals is. And by using that, we can, we have a trust score for across the country of all different populations, races, ethnicities, all of that to where we know what veterans trust or what veterans trust in us looks like. And based on that, we also have machine learning and AI components that combs through all of that uh, feedback and tries to find, are there veterans in crisis and do those veterans need help right now? And since 2017, this machine learning, just from asking veterans and our customers in general, what they think of us, what can we do better? What do they want to tell us? Well, we were, we've been able to uh, refer more than 600 veterans and their families, caregivers, survivors, but primarily veterans to the veteran crisis line to get immediate action and over 100 uh, to the veteran homelessness call line to make sure that they have a place to sleep or the resources that they need at that time. So by imp implementing a little bit machine learning and uh, AI, as well as some, of course, some, some uh, manual touch and looking at the messages that are coming in, we've been able to kind of streamline and save a lot of resources, all, not, all the while not sacrificing the experience our customers receive. Gotcha. Tim, do you take any of that feedback from vSignal and use that to drive any social media messaging? We actually have been uh, really playing with that recently. So, uh, I mean, for all, everybody's online, you think about communicators, well, what's the best way to have effective communications? Give people what they want. Get, give them something that they want to open, want to read, want to click on. And by looking at some of those uh, highlight topics, we've been able to, we're starting to really learn more about our veteran population and think about their interests and what is important to them. And a lot of those things might be, you know, this is no surprise to anybody who's a veteran or has family members of veterans. A lot of us like to go fishing. A lot of us like NASCAR. A lot of us like uh, hunting and, and uh, shooting. And there's a lot of uh, those kind of very obvious uh, traits that we can apply and we should be building content on. But there's also a lot of things that we, we haven't really thought about before. And that's really helping us learn more about our customers. So I appreciate that question. 
think think a lot of veterans like free stuff too, right? You're yeah. you're, you're learning that. They and do. Yeah. And and I, I know we haven't dove into that yet, but uh, that is again, give veterans, give your customers what they want. Don't focus on what your organization wants, and then you're truly going to have a huge response like we've had in in, uh, in our vet resources newsletter. Yeah, because I think what, what Tim's alluding to is what we can take is we can take what they want mm -hmm. and then sprinkle in what they need. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. using well, I, I, Tanner, but, I need to give shout out to Ray Leal from uh, your team as well. And Ray and I used to work together. He kind of dubbed that as sugar and medicine, where <laughs> just like a, just like a kid, you're going to give them a candy and a shot at the same time at the doctor's office. That's the same thing. You got to do something uh, that maybe is not so sexy content and pair it up with a lot of flashy and sexy content yeah. very good Great. um Bronwyn, you know you kind of have a unique uh part of this team um and the fact that you're not really catering to a lot of the audience that we already have you're trying mm -hmm. to bring more of the audience in which i think some of the audience that are online are, are, are would be really interested in right. so how did you go about that when you had a contract <laughs> okay and in and, and <laughs> over the time <laughs> but um and and how did you how are you doing that now and how are you working through that so the idea is there is a huge audience of people, veterans and family members who aren't accessing VA benefits and services. So uh, my mission is to go out and bring them in and educate them. And a lot of veterans who are coming to VA about one thing don't know about the other things. They may know the GI Bill, but they don't know anything about life insurance. And so the idea is to to educate them and how do you educate them you need to go where they are so mm -hmm. um, I I developed an outreach website and like a blended way of getting getting my message out to them so we had advertising mainly digital advertising because you can track digital ad advertising very easily mm -hmm. and you can see how much money it takes to actually get a conversion so in our case, you know, we got down below $3 to get a veteran to start an application. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can test different messages, you can test different pictures, mm -hmm. you can see uh, how do people respond to, you know, a service member in uniform picture versus someone who's not in uniform. So we had the advertising. We also had an email campaign where we're reaching out to veterans, mm -hmm. um, communicating to them via email, and asking them to come back to a, uh, a landing page. And then once they were on the landing page, we could measure um, who came from email, who came from advertising. Mm -hmm. um, we also have social media content mm -hmm. that we created and shared with partners. And that, that partnership aspect of it is key because um, VA has a lot of people who go to the VA Facebook page, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of veterans out there who don't come to the VA Facebook page. So going to the veteran organizations mm -hmm. and asking them to partner with us and share content on their Facebook page, mm -hmm. we get Name a whole couple. new audience. Name a couple. Name a couple that you partner with. Oh, we partner with Walgreens. We partner with VFW, um, Vietnam Veterans of America. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have some online too. I saw somebody come on. Yeah, That's DAV. Great. Let's give somebody a shout out. <laughs> I thought we had some. We partnered with a hundred paralyzed veterans of America. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah. How are how are you leveraging uh, VA social media to help in your core mission right now mm -hmm. with the live events? Okay, so right now we're doing um, Facebook lives on VA uh, Facebook, and we're taking these and we're putting an event page on the VA Facebook mm -hmm. event, um, you know, part of the Facebook page. And then um, creating social media and newsletter content that directs people to that page. Then we send it out to all the partners and um, organizations mm -hmm. and we send it out to all areas of VA and whoever wants to share it, if you guys want to share it, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that directs people back to the Facebook page. So we can see how many people are coming from the social media. Now, when you do a Facebook Live, Facebook throttles the audience. Um, I think the limit is someone around 400 people who can join live. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, what we're doing is we're doing some promotion at the top mm -hmm. of, you know, before the Facebook Live, maybe um, a week out. Mm -hmm. And then um, Tim and I are working together to get this uh all the facebook lives are branded right now with the vet resources hashtag mm -hmm. and um tim in his email that he sends out every week mm -hmm. is going to then 
uh, promote this after the fact. So then after the fact, people can go to Facebook in great numbers and watch the video. Yeah. Right. And, uh, right. you know, I've had, you know, 25,000. Now, are you doing hits. this just from the big VA account or do you guys have other branches? Like the, I know you have a lot of like regional medical centers. Are they all doing their own live events? I have been What's asked to talk live? to people, mm -hmm. local people about how to do Facebook live. And I've mm -hmm. done that. I know that local facilities are doing it, but um, my Facebook lives have only been, you know, two categories. One, we uh -huh. go out to the VSO. So yeah. like Vietnam Veterans of America, right. we did. Veteran service organizations. Those are the yeah, veteran tribes. service Those organizations. Are like non nonprofits. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So like Vietnam Veterans of America partnered with me on a Facebook live mm -hmm. on homeless veterans, what we can do right. for veterans at risk of being homeless and veterans who are homeless and um, got a huge response. So right. we did that on their page uh -huh. and we also promoted it on VA's page. And in the Facebook Live, we directed them to online resources. So not only do we have people talking and we kind of limit it to 20 minutes because 20 minutes is pretty much the longest anybody would sit there, less than mm -hmm. that, even better. Um, we share information, but we also post links. And that's okay. really important because if somebody comes in and they're not looking at the video, they still see the links. Yeah. And the links are resources that veterans could look at and get the information. Like in this case, if you're about to become homeless, where do you go? Mm -hmm. The National Veterans Homeless Hotline, the VA.gov application site, a blog, on Vantage Point, which you're going to talk about. Yeah, we'll get into the blog. Um, <laughs> that, that talks about what to do if you're going to become homeless or what do you do, where do you get help, mm -hmm. things like that. And then that lives in perpetuity on the VA Facebook site or in this case, Vietnam Veterans of America's Facebook site. Mm -hmm. Bronwyn, like, if, go ahead, Jeff. If I, if I can add something, I think just genius that you started with with that explore and, and the, uh, the Facebook Live and the best practices for everyone to take away is you partner with an organization on almost all of them. So it's not just VA sitting up there. It's not just a federal employee. It's a, it's that VSO and their faces on there that gives them a lot of onus to promote it themselves, but it also adds a lot of authority to VA because it's not just VA talking about VA. It's our trusted partners and veterans and our customers also sharing in that. And they have such great feedback and questions that ask that, you know, even some of us in our ivory tower might not think of asking. So I think that's just a great thing that you started. Thank you. Uh, I like, okay, so Bronwyn, you talked about the email, the email curate and the, the huge email list that, that Tim's put together. Uh, where are we at now, Tim? 10.6 million veteran email accounts? 10.8. 10.8, okay. So I want to get into, into content push and, and, and the synergy between Dom, Tim, um, and, and Bronwyn. Um, Dom, let's talk about media creation. You have over what 250 interns now uh, for VA digital media. You got bloggers, you got editors, you got graphic designers, fact checkers, webmasters, recruiting, HR. Um, how did you build this huge content arm for the VA to put into that email list that, that, that Tim, that Tim has? Uh -oh. I've actually been getting that question a lot lately. By the way, I just uh, want to, Say if my puppy starts barking, I apologize. Um, but anyway, on to the topic at hand. Um, that was, I was actually just discussing that with a coworker Maria earlier today, and um, I think she's online right now as well. But, um, but we actually, uh, I started with, uh, this is uh, the Virtual Student Federal Service as the internship program that I'm working with. And they, if you wanna check them out, they are VSFS dot state dot gov it's a state department um program no, and share it they right yeah go ahead <laughs> there's maria oops that's the, oh, that's the blog i wait, wait for that thing to pop okay there it is bam there it is. <laughs> yeah so we started uh i believe i started in 2016 working with the vsfs um internship program uh, back then, I believe it was called Virtual Student uh, Foreign Service, and it, it was uh, the State Department's um, internship program, and they kind of expanded it out to everybody else uh, in the federal government. And the the way that we, um, you know, apply is basically you submit projects, you, you create an account on their website, and you submit a project um, for interns to apply to, and they apply through USA Jobs. I'm sure everybody's familiar with USA Jobs. 
Um, but yeah, so here's an example. This is one that uh, I'm sure Tanner, you would be quite familiar with. This is the podcast coordinating producer. And so you just submit a project summary and a write up of the project and kind of skills that are kind of be required number of in interns that you're looking for. And it's an unpaid internship. And there are thousands of people that apply to um, BSFS internships um, across the federal government. And, um, you know, hopefully you get some really stellar applicants and you can interview them and bring them on the team. Our first uh, team was about 16 people, I believe. And then um, the following year, I believe we had uh, close to 70. I just decided to expand it. Um, but th that comes with some administrative burden as well, um, because the uh, you, you would be surprised at how much time it takes to actually manage a team of uh, 70 interns and to think that we expanded that out to uh, 270 uh, interns. <laughs> oh, you're looking at the website right now. Um, I will note that my uh, web developer intern uh, and his team, uh, Lon Dugan, he uh, asked me to point out the fact that at the uh, bottom of the home page there is a how to apply button and you can go there and see exactly how to apply and you can subscribe for uh, emails uh, about um, about applications to um, various internships um, that are going to be opening up in the future. <laughs> My puppy's about to now, chew on Dom, Now this, this website was all intern built, correct? It is. It's also intern hosted. Um, this, this was not, I did not build this. This was built by interns. And, um, what you see right now is a tip of the proverbial iceberg. Um, there is, um, a lot of information that you just cannot see because it is, um, it is, uh, be, it's kind of like an, it's got its own little intranet. There's a back end to it. And, uh, there's a whole social network back there. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, we have some really great interns on board. Um, one, one note I was going to say, um, but as the, uh, as the number of interns on the team expanded, we kind of had to, um, I had to draw back on my experience in the military. I was on a ship. Um, we had a command structure and we implemented it on the leadership team. So now we have uh, executive leadership team, department heads, division officers, and then, you know, the, uh, I would call them rank and file, but the, the interns on the teams. And so um, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't manage it all myself. Nobody probably could as a uh, ad addition to their actual job. So, <laughs> so uh, I let the interns manage their own teams. Very good. Very good. Um, how are they driving traffic? Because how are they, what are they doing for the, the big email push? Because we push an email once every every week, right? How are they, how are you using the interns to create content mm -hmm. on blogs.va.gov for this mass email push? Good, um, that's a good question. Actually, they've been um, doing a lot of content creation since we brought them on board. Um, they, we have, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we have writing interns, editing interns, fact-checking interns, uh, graphic design interns, and they all work together. We use Trello, um, and so, the writers will write up, um, say a veteran of the day post, for instance, that's one of the things that we do. Um, and then they'll post their um, written product on the Trello card and an editor will hop in there and edit that and upload the edited document. A graphic designer will make a graphic um, and the fact checker will go in and check all the, all the facts pertaining to the veteran service. Sorry, I got a puppy chewing on a squeaky toy here. <laughs> um, and so they, all, they all combine together. To, uh, <laughs> to make a piece of content, <laughs> um, and and they they all work together uh, to to get it done. But that's not the only thing that they work on. Um, one of the things that they also do is um, they've been working on Operation Song posts. They've been working on um, a veteran story post, which is kind of like a veteran of the day, except they dive a lot deeper um, and tell a more compelling story about a veteran, um, and th that becomes a feature. Uh, very often in our um, in our newsletter, they've also been working a lot with Tim Hudak's team um, on the uh, creating content for vet resources. They will actually have a team of interns out scouring the web for cool resources for veterans, whether it be free stuff or some kind of new treatment uh, program that maybe people hadn't heard of before, um, or you know, you like like a, a discounts um, and stuff like that. And he will either give the thumbs up or the thumbs down on whether or not we could post about it. And if, if we can post about it, then another team of interns will write up a whole post about it. And then a graphic design intern team will create graphics for it. 
um, and we have interns to edit it and it'll move on to the newsletter, which is also, we have a team of interns um, building out the newsletter in Gov Delivery. Um, and I'm not gonna say that they do it all on their own. Tim definitely has a hand in that, but um, they've, I mean, they've had a, a they, t they play a, a big role in, in working on that as well. I mean, you can ask Tim if he wants to expand on that. Yeah, I was gonna say, Tim, how do you decide what to put in the newsletter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and first, it's really cool to see in, in, the, in the Trello with the uh, intern army, as we like to call it. It's really awesome to see it going from idea to the next bucket, development, editing, graphic, and then for production. And uh, it's just a lot of content pumps out through that way and really appreciate all their work on it. So the way we decide is kind of a collaborative approach. In the beginning, when we were just doing a pilot, we, we did um, kind of just decide in a close circle, but since then we've expanded it to have an open invite. Every Friday at noon, we have a 30 minute, which only lasts about 10 minutes usually call for open to all VA communicators across the board. That's because we want vet resources, which goes to all of VA's customers that, and all of the emails that we have in VA. We want that to be accessible and a tool for every single communicator in the department. And as probably a lot of you on the call can, can um, relate to, you have a lot of different offices with a lot of different communication needs all throughout the board. And this is how we're working to make sure everybody gets a piece of the pie and it truly is their tool. So we decide on, on that call, we, hey, anybody have something you wanna communicate to 11 million folks? And we start to schedule it out and we use Trello to do it, schedule it out. We're about three or four weeks scheduled out. And then um, based on that, Dom's uh, intern folks and, uh, and a little bit of our touch too, and VA employees, of course, we kind of build that newsletter uh, and, and get it scheduled and, and send it out. Um, I want to, I before we move, I see a couple of questions in the, in, the, in the feed and we'll get to that. Uh, I do want to point out that blogs.va.gov right here, this is kind of like their main hub of content. Everything that they're talking about is being put on the blog. And that's going to be dry, and that drives a lot of the content creation of social media. Drives a lot of the content that goes in the, into the uh, into the email there. Uh, does your con does your content go across all channels? So when you post like on a topic or a veteran story, I mean, does that do you guys aim to have that like on your blog, on your social channels, Facebook? Um, I think every podcast. Do you aim to to see something go all the way through? I don't think so. I think some things, you know, some things just live on the blog. Uh -huh. uh, some things maybe they're just hyper local and they just end up at a at a Facebook on a Vamsy. Yeah. Um, you know. Hey Tana. Yeah. What's up, Dom? Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just gonna point out that um, some of it actually does. Um, like some some things might not go on um, uh, across all channels, but. A number of things actually do. We have, uh, so we use Slack for team communications with our interns. Uh, we have like 270 interns in our Slack channel. And we set up an automatic, uh, um, a channel that has a connected RSS feed that is basically connected to the blog. So every every post that is published on the blog um, should just kind of automatically pops up in that channel. Um, and we have a, a couple of, like a small intern team that um, one of their tasks is to take everything that, every blog post that pops into that feed and um, add it to our social media calendar. Um, and then they also, we use Salesforce Social Studio um, to schedule, uh, to manage our social media content. And they also add um, every post that they take off of the blog, they add it to shared content so that it can be um, easily utilized by anybody on any team across the enterprise, uh, across VA, who is using Social Studio, who has a workspace set up and uh, is looking for content to fill out their calendar. So. Yeah, a lot of things that we do publish on the blog do end up in social. We're just now doing it down, even down to uh, uh, Instagram stories, right? That's a new thing that we're. Yeah, uh, Salesforce Social Studio just uh, apparently just did an update because now we noticed the other day we could do Instagram stories and it'll uh, it'll push it out to your mobile phone and then you have to publish it from there. But um, yeah, so that's that's going to be a new thing that we're going to be doing a lot more of. Instagram stories on what was, what do you guys use to schedule social? This is like such a hot topic always on the list or like who's using what, you know? Yeah, actually, um, I saw, I think in the social media community of practice, uh, listserv, um, earlier this morning, somebody was asking about, um, what to do if you want to publish to like Facebook and Instagram, but you have to deal with two factor authentication. And you have multiple people on your team. 
Um, and do you want them all having to log into the same account or whatever? And I was, I was going to respond, but then I found out, uh, I remembered that we had this thing going on. <laughs> so, um, okay. That's an open question out there. But uh, one of the things that we do, so the way the Salesforce Social Studio, and I, I imagine a, a number of other uh, social media management platforms um, like, uh, you know, Sprout Social or, you know, Adobe Social Cloud or whatever, um, they, they connect through one person's um, uh, authentication, like one, third, one person's account. So in our case, it's, uh, it's mine. Um, but that person has to have two-factor authentication um, for Facebook specifically. They have to have, they have, to have two-factor two authentication enabled, and they also have to verify their identity in some cases, um, I think, depending on the size of your account. But because I was already authenticated um, and have two-factor authentication in, uh, in place, um, everybody else, so Social Studio basically farms out my connection to our entire team. Um, so they all connect through my um, my login and my authentication, and they publish as though they were me. Um, but it's it's done through Salesforce Social Studio. Thanks. I don't know if that answers the question, but it, it works across Facebook and Instagram. When it comes to the to the stuff that I'm doing, it's also across platforms. Great, great. So mm -hmm. I work very collaboratively with all parts of VA. So if I'm putting together content, mm -hmm. say on education, mm -hmm. um, say the GI Bill, mm -hmm. I work with the folks over at VBA on the content, mm -hmm. and we put together um, materials to promote. And those materials usually include uh, a Vantage Point blog for mm -hmm. VA's blog. Um, a newsletter mm -hmm. article that goes out to all the partners mm -hmm. and um, social media content that goes out to all of the VA facilities, like um, all of the medical centers, VDA, NCA, you know, that's National Cemetery Administration, Veteran mm -hmm. Benefits Administration, all sorts of social media platforms that are inside of VA. Uh -huh. And um, then afterwards, we do an In Case You Missed It blog. The Facebook event page also has similar information on it. I love In Case You Missed It. It's such a nice opportunity yeah. to circle back. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you, you sometimes you get a flood of engagement on your live. You get like 100 to 300 actionable questions. Mm -hmm. And I guess the blog is, is one way that you were able to answer that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we're doing a live event, um, <laughs> I it takes an army, it takes a village to do these right. things. So, you know, there's, there's me and I'm kind of organized behind the scenes, but then there are a whole bunch of subject matter experts on whoever it is, on whatever mm -hmm. it is. Like, um, for instance, the, the Forever GI Bill. We had a bunch of subject matter experts and then we have the social media people for the different parts of VA that are then, they're looking at the questions and sending them the subject matter experts, posting the mm -hmm. responses as we're doing a live video and you know we're looking for two-way engagement we're looking to answer the questions of the veterans who who are out there posting going what do i do you know yeah. and not everybody watches the videos so i love the idea of having a blog where you're answering questions you could get to it yeah and I then you this. take the best That's my questions from today. <laughs> and i take That's snippets great. and i post them into yeah. the blog so it's like you, you could even little... like tweet answer like if folks mm -hmm. you know i know sometimes like on our channels we have people pinging us all kinds of questions and like generally speaking we don't um uh, answer back live on social media channels but sometimes people ask questions and i'll just make tweets with the answers and tweet out the answers you know so i think maybe yeah. it's something to consider too yeah the next day mm -hmm. um I usually work into the afternoon putting together all the questions that weren't answered and then I mm -hmm. distribute them to the subject matter experts and the social mm -hmm. media people and then they go and they, they post the answers, they follow awesome. up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to reach out into you know, quarters of VA that weren't involved because wow. you get random questions that are really important to the veteran and um, you want to answer them, you probably them, know? know everybody at VA. <laughs> I'm starting to know everybody yeah. at VA. I mean, uh, it's nice to know uh, more about what, what our own team is doing. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Um, I want to get to a couple of the questions here uh, before they go through the feed. Yep. Um, this is from Will Powell. Do And this is for anybody that can answer it. Do you do any specific outreach to reach homeless veterans in particular as it relates to digital? Yeah, I think Brahmin touched on it. <laughs> yeah, I think you already did. Uh, a yeah. Little bit. yeah, so uh -huh. we've got a Homeless Veterans Outreach Initiative, and it's mm -hmm. a team that works with the Veterans Health Administration and does a lot of different types of outreach events to mm -hmm. veterans. But as far as digital, um, I did do the Facebook Live. We also have um, a public service announcement, several public service announcements that we've made. We're trying to drive people to the website that 
you know, it gives the resources that can help. And also there's a hotline for um, homeless veterans um, where they can call. I think, dig I think digitally, we've done some podcast episodes. Uh, every five and zero episode is called a benefits breakdown. So we'll, you know, I think we've had a couple of homeless, uh, like what, what some of the homeless departments, you know, within VA homeless outreach and that sort of thing on the show to talk about their department so we can get that in the, out of that channel. Uh, I'm sure there's stuff that's been in the, in the, in the newsletter. Yeah. So I think one of the challenges with homelessness and uh, veterans in crisis and mental health suicide is that a lot of those people who are in crisis, they don't think three weeks beforehand that they are going to be in that category. So they don't think to themselves, oh, I need to write this number down or I need to save this somewhere. So one of our, uh, probably our, our biggest key strategy on the digital side is to make sure that everybody knows about that VA does have a veteran crisis line, that there is help for homeless veterans. That way, if families and friends, they know somebody struggling, they remember, oh, I, hey, I, I read something about this, there's help, and they can Google the number and get the information to them. So it's probably all about word of mouth when it comes to uh, digital. Gotcha. Dom, Dom any uh, content creation uh, from the interns that kind of target uh, homelessness at all? Or is that is that kind of just as it comes, you see a good story and you just go ahead? Actually, you would call me right as another phone is ringing. <laughs> Well, let me let me fill in a bit. There's okay. one more thing that I don't think we've touched on, and that's the VA YouTube channel. So yeah. we have a lot of great videos on the VA YouTube channel. And um, I've got 109 videos that I created for Explore. Mm -hmm. And there are veterans, well, 100 of them are veteran testimonial videos. So wow. there are veterans talking about their experiences, talking about their experiences with VA, what led them uh -huh. to seek help, how things are helping. So if you go to va.gov and you go to the search um, thing at the top, right, and you type in outreach materials, uh -huh. you'll also find a page that has fact sheets and um, on the basic benefits and it has those videos. Or if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see them because they have little colored icons mm -hmm. and pictures of veterans with a white background. So there, are, I try to mirror the veteran um, population mm -hmm. and the service member population and err on this side of diversity. Sure. So if you want to um, send people uh, stories, uh, you can just share those. Um, there are a few homeless veterans that talked about their experiences and what happened. Would help them. Yeah, and that go, that all goes into what Tim was saying is that we're all trying to just let everybody know that there are VA services yeah. for homeless veterans. Tanner, yes, sir. Tanner, oh, now that the other phone's done ringing, um, <laughs> one thing I was going to point out that um, is that while our um, our intern team is not specifically creating content uh, for homeless veterans generally as a general rule, one of the things that they are doing is working with uh, the homeless veteran outreach team. I, I think that's who they're working with. Um, to go back in time through our content and add specific labels to any content that had to do with homeless veterans so that we can track metrics um, and, and create reports based on that content um, and also assist in um, creating campaign or in tracking the success of campaigns um, in the future. So they're working with the homeless veteran uh, team and uh, trying to um, you know, do that kind of stuff. Very good. Hope That's that. Great. Thanks for your question, Will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next one is from Basil White to everyone. How do you integrate what you learn from online interaction, uh, helpline calls, and face-to-face -face interaction into a single body of knowledge? I love this question. I'll take Damn. a stab. Hey, Basil. <laughs> so, I think that's that's a big challenge. I'm sure everybody on this. Uh, panel in this call who's listening has seen this challenge because a lot of those metrics are apples and oranges. A phone call is not the same as feedback on uh, an email or on social media, different, different formats, different ways it comes in there. And uh, one of the ways, at least right now at VA, that I know of that we're um, handling that is through governance boards, whether it be navigation, modernization, or uh, contact center. Uh, we're really trying to focus all those decisions into a panel to make sure that all the information is presented and all the experts are there to weigh in based on all that, all that feedback. But looking forward, and I think uh, you're familiar with this, uh, Basil, but uh, we are starting to send all of our data and all of our metrics to uh, one singular platform like Power BI, a, a place where everybody can um, look at that feedback on any topic 
and uh, can cross check all the metrics from a variety of sources and whether it be the contact center online or social media. I don't think we're there yet, but it's definitely where we're heading. And uh, that's how we're planning to make sure we, we use all feedback that's coming in. And that's something I do know that's very important to our uh, secretary and our, the whole uh, VA uh, st uh, staff right now too, is all of our decisions are, are, should be based on customer feedback and that's what's gonna drive uh, process improvement. Now, I, I, kind of going back to what we did a couple of days ago, do you think client services and, and how they keep case files um, kind of falls into that as well? Well, that's also um, a challenge across probably everybody's organization, especially VA. Uh, there's many different ways, you know, contracts come in and you get one uh, contact relationship management system or a case ticket system. And then another office builds, puts another one on there and now how they're not connecting. Right. So yeah, that's actually something that's been, uh, I think almost finished, if not finished already, there is going to be one unified case management system throughout the VA. And that's again, music to all of our ears because all of our social media content and um, can, can fall into that when it applies to service recovery. Very good. I have a little something on that too, Tanner. Yeah, what's up? Um, one of the things that uh, some of our interns are doing is actually um, uh, moderating, or well, not so much moderating, but um, like looking at comments on um, on our Facebook channels um, to see you know if there's any questions. Um, we've recently started working with uh, with uh, the Veterans Experience Office to um, to get answers um, to those questions actually delivered to the veteran, uh, but also. Uh, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, Tim, that our interns created like a list of 400 different questions along with like the number of times they were asked that we that they saw on social media. So we provided that to your team to be included in sort of a knowledge management portal. So um, that's another way that we're trying to integrate um, questions across different channels. And uh, answer uh, Chip. Hey, Chip. Awesome. Good. To, good to see you, Chip. Uh, how do we measure success? Well, I think at, at VA, we're measuring through trust and that's in our uh, codified in our code of regulations at VA. It's all through ease, effectiveness and emotion. That's how we rate our interaction with our customers. And uh, we have a very scientific, it's all based on industry standards and um, all of the experts that put that together. But it's really how we ensure that each interaction is an exceptional one. And by, I think it's starting to trickle down across organization. Again, our organization is giant, but once all of those measurements are put together, uh, we're going to be able to track it across the board and even more so than we have now. So I, I think, trust. I think though, if you're looking at maybe like, you know, what's, what's a, maybe a metric for success on a Facebook or an Instagram. Um, I think when I first came on board and, and, and VA on, on, on the OPIA, which is a big, otherwise known as we call it big, big VA, um, we were measured on growth. Um, and then once we reached a level of, um, I guess we kind of plateaued on Facebook and you kind of plateau on certain areas, then you look at different engagement ratios, uh, engagement ratio between, um, basically like a, almost like a, how much are you creating awareness? How much you create, how much you do, how many conversions are you getting and how many actual subs are you getting? Um, Dom, is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? I think, is there, how else do we measure metrics yeah. for success within uh, OPIA? I was actually wondering if that uh, question was more um, focused on the uh, homeless veteran, um, uh, like how do you measure success uh, in outreach to homeless veterans through social, because it seemed to come in at the same time. So um, I think you pretty much covered, because we, we actually did, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the reason that we were focused on growth uh, when, you know, when you first got here was because that's the way, that's where we were focused uh, when we first started using social media in general at VA. Uh, and then they never changed it. So like as you okay. continue, um, you know, from one year to the next, you want to be able to show you did better than last year. But eventually um, with cha uh, changes in Facebook al algorithms and whatnot, um, you know, you end up no longer getting better than last year. <laughs> but then you have to look for something a little more meaningful than say growth. I mean, because we still do have growth. It's just not on the same channels anymore. We, you know, our Instagram channel is just blowing up. Uh, big thanks to um, our team and also to the interns um, because we do have an intern Instagram team. But, um, you know, 15,000 a, a month uh, growth, it, it's crazy. Uh, but, but yeah, so as far as measuring success, yeah, we've moved to measuring uh, engagement rates instead of specifically, you know, growth and followership. Yeah. How, how well we're engaging with, uh, with our audience. Um, 
just ratio, just different ratios between mm -hmm. uh, likes to comments or likes to subs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, All right. We got a great question in here from EPA. I'm sure everybody on the line is wondering the same thing. We'd like to hire more veterans uh, non-comparatively. Maybe non-competitively? I think that means non-competitive. We'd yeah. like to hire more veterans. What are the best ways to reach veterans, to get more veterans in the federal workforce at our agencies? Tim. To Darren Sherrard. <laughs> Darren. Talk to VA careers. Absolutely, yeah. Darren. And, uh, VA Let's for, pass around some contacts after whole, this session. That's a whole other uh, yeah. community of practice discussion there. Right. Well, um, well, I mean, we can, I mean, specifically and tactically for that question for everybody on the call, if you, you have, if you have a resource that veterans should know about, uh -huh. please send us a note about it because we'll blast it out to our 11 million, uh, yep. you know, 10.8 million email lists since yeah, I think we started Vet Resources and you know, 10 months ago in April, 2019, we've had over 115 million opens of that email and we've okay. driven 15 million clicks alone to va.gov and, and uh, the blog property. So it's a really effective way of reaching veterans and we're all about sharing the wealth and getting that good knowledge to our uh, veteran customers. What if we want to highlight hey, Tim. jobs at our agency? Would you guys run something on that? If we want to I was going to ask Tim, do we need to have like a, a job opening of the week? <laughs> <laughs> do, do something like that that'd be cool or, or maybe or maybe just a newsletter with just that yeah i mean there's so many agencies we also have yeah, one blog opportunities for veterans too special set aside that's what i'm cooking up in my head right now stand by for my email <laughs> all right well, well that could maybe be like a weekly blog uh post like uh jobs you know veteran uh hires of the week or something like that and then we could put uh something like that into the newsletter do you have specific, um, I mean, does each agency have specific sites where they post jobs for veterans? Well, I know they're categorized that way, mm -hmm. like specifically in USA jobs. And when I post it, because I know there, there was a uh, observance day this year that was like, I might be in the hashtag, but it was like hire a vet, or it was like a specific day, to, or maybe it was a week to encourage veterans to apply for jobs. And um, we featured some, on our channels, we featured um, a few veterans here at GSA talking about, you know, their time in, the military, what they brought, you know, the value, skills, experience that they brought with them to their careers at GSA, and then promoting also open jobs. You you shared this on on Facebook across all the channels. Across all the yeah, channels. All going. Well, I was thinking with, was with Facebook specifically. Yeah. I mean, with the one four four audience that we have, one point four million yeah. audience, you could cross post that. Yeah. So you create the content. We set up cross posting. Okay. Next. This and then year, we could throw we and we could throw it on our Facebook as well. It's happening. Okay. I think that's a great idea, and um, I think we're. Anytime that we have interactions like this, it's like, yeah, let's collaborate on it. I think that's terrific. Collaboration is always key. Give you yeah. a, a, a real recent quick example. The census um, team came to the VA and said, hey, we want to reach more veterans and hire more veterans for our temporary uh, census jobs. And that, that all happened, I think, in this past week. And next week, I know uh, the blog goes up that promotes those, those jobs, and we're blasting it out right. to make sure that veterans know about those jobs across the country. Well, Would this be a good uh, time to point out we have an email address uh, specifically for our team is newmedia at va.gov. Um, I, I think um, this, yeah, this, can you, can the, you this was, what's that? Can you put that in the chat, newmedia at va.gov. Uh, actually, I can't because I'm on the iPad. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right. Um, somebody hit us. But uh, one of the things I was going to point out that was that um, Ray and I, Ray Zayal, uh, one of our uh, team members, he's amazing, by the way. But um, we had discussed this in the past, um, and it's something that we are hopefully going to pursue in the future, is, um, you know, making other uh, agencies across the federal government aware of the fact that we, you know, our, our blog is pretty much open for business. Like, if you have something that applies to veterans that is a tangible resource for a veteran, uh, specifically, you know, jobs is a good thing, but also consider the fact that our, you know, our followers, our customers are also your customers. They're citizens of the United States of America. They, you know, um, they would, you know, are beneficiaries of programs that you probably uh, administer at your agency. So if you have something that applies to them, you know, consider sending a sending an email over to us and letting us know about the program so that we can publish it on our blog. And then it'll automatically go out across our social media channels. And then Tanner will do a podcast on it. Uh, yeah, I'll do a podcast <laughs> on it. Absolutely. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Benefits breakdown. Yeah, yeah so also, um, you know, VA being about helping veterans, there are yeah. offices within VA who are 
dealing with employment. So you've got um, Ted at the Veteran Benefits. I think it's Transition and Economic Development. Okay. Not 100% not sure on that. Mm -hmm. You've got VA for Vets, right. um, which is another office um, that works to employ veterans. VA Careers. Um, you know, VA Careers, wow. yes. Mm -hmm. And they have, um, a, they manage the VA LinkedIn page, I think. And um, we have, uh, of course, the, the uh, Voc Rehab, mm -hmm. which is where um, we help veterans get back to work if they have a disability that's mm -hmm. affecting their employment. Um, there are also VISO offices and then all the federal agencies that deal with veterans. So there are like a lot of things in place that are good networking opportunities. Oh, that's great. That's great. Very good. Talking about that email um, that we have, the 10.8 million, um, talk about some of the drawbacks that we've, we've, we've discovered in, in driving that much traffic at once. Um, and, and what solutions have we explored? Yeah. So vet resources is a combination of all the emails we had in the department. We wanted to make sure that everybody was getting a contact at least once, once a week. And as you probably have in your organizations too, you have offices that will start up really strong. Hey, we need a newsletter. We need a Facebook page. And then six months later, it's a ghost town. So what, all those customers, they're no longer getting that interaction. That really doesn't hurt or that really hurts your trust and, and the customer's experience. So we wanted to make sure everybody was getting uh, a, a contact at least once, once a week. So by putting all those emails together, we, you know, it's a huge number, 10.8 million. And that has a lot of, risks to it for certain uh, organizations, including our own. Uh, when we first started putting the, the newsletter out, we routinely, you know, we put that out every Wednesday night. Wednesday night, Thursday morning, the news, the, the VA blog is crashed. It's, it's down. Uh, organizations that we've promoted before, these are awesome organizations uh, pro giving free toolboxes to veterans, for example. You can imagine how many people are jumping on that. They had something like 20,000 requests overnight and normally they have 2,000 requests a year. So they're good, but they're, they're, their systems are overloaded, and that's something we have to stress is, hey, this is the real deal. It's a huge audience, and you need to make sure that you have certain people on standby and your IT can support it. Yep. This one from Brady. Oh, go ahead, Dom. Oh, sorry. I, I just wanted, before we moved on too far, um, I wanted to uh, point out something that was on a previous topic of uh, – uh, um, how to hire veterans. Uh, I actually work, used to work at a, a, the Veteran Employment Services Office, and uh, it appears that they still, <laughs> I, I, you know, I left the team, so I haven't really been following what, exactly what they're doing, but um, it appears that their website is still up, and they're still publishing stuff on social media, um, but so if you go to va for vets uh, .va .gov, um maybe that will help you as well. I don't know. I sent that to you uh, Tanner in Slack. I don't know if you can get to it, but um, yeah, it's VA for vets, not the number four, but the word for vets.va.gov. Um, that may, we used to share a bunch of job announcements um, on our website at Veteran Employment Services Office. So that might be helpful as well. Very cool. That's great. Thanks. Um, let's see here. Who did the great artwork on the whiteboard behind you? That would be Gabby. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Um, what's the email again? Bill Brown, Chicago. That's newmedia at va.gov. Um, hi, I have a question for Bronwyn. Have you researched best channels for reaching vets who are 55 and up? Thank you. Amy Alexander. Hmm, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't broken down our demographics into ages and regions. So, um, but I know for a fact that there are a lot of 55 and up veterans with certain um, veteran service <coughs> organizations. Like for instance, Viet, uh, uh, Vietnam Veterans of America has mm -hmm. Vietnam veterans and in order to be a Vietnam veteran, you would have to be uh, 70 something now, I think. Yeah. So, um, you know, American Legion, their population, um, while there are many younger people joining, there is still an older population there mm -hmm. and VVA. So any any um, VSO that has been around a long time is going to keep its membership. Even if they're skewing more youthful now, they're going to retain their older members. So that's what I would advise. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can tell you from internally, um, our Facebook skews older. You know, it's, it's a more of an older crowd. Um, our Instagram is more of a younger crowd. And let me know if I'm wrong, Dom. Uh, oh, tell them about our TikTok. 
Oh. <laughs> we, have a, <laughs> we have a TikTok. Not anymore. <laughs> no, we got to work on that. <laughs> um, okay, this one from Brady Botch again. What type of relationship have you developed with VSOs to promote your blogs, newsletters, and their publication sites? Okay, so I run um, a meeting, a regular meeting with um, large VSOs communications mm -hmm. directors, and I host different um, offices from around VA. They come and they speak, and I ask them to bring social media content, newsletter content. Um, they are able to network with the veteran service organization communications directors, and then from there, um, oftentimes there are interviews, there are articles, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. In addition to that, I run communications between that group and also social media people within the different veteran-facing organizations in an email. So I send out most press releases that we put out. I send out social media content that, that are cleared through the, the main communication shops of, of the or different parts of VA. Mm -hmm. um, I share, you know, when I'm asked, I'm, I share stuff. I shared stuff about, uh, about um, you know, from VA research the other day. So mm -hmm. I, I have that communication. And then the secretary's office and the undersecretaries of all three administrations also have a VSO liaison who does outreach to these organizations. And they have regular meetings as well. So uh, that's kind of how we do it. Broader, mm -hmm. broader. Um, I want to get to one of the questions that were written down that were submitted beforehand before we had this, um, before we had this uh, go live. Uh, when jaded veterans are encountered, how to, how, when jaded veterans are encountered, how does the team address their grievances? Um, Tim, I think we can go back to what we're doing with service recovery right now and the fact that, you know, as a, as a public affairs officer, as a public, or as someone that works in media, you look at a comment that you're, that you, you know it's not critical, um, you know it's not a crisis mode, it's not, they're not doing harm to themselves or others, but it's not a general question that you can just answer sometimes. Um, and how do you help that veteran? And it's, it's like some of the worst things is not, one, some of the worst things that you can have is not having the knowledge to help that veteran at that moment. Right. And from a public affairs perspective, you don't wanna go down a rabbit hole right. where you look ignorant or you're right. doing the right thing or, or so. Um, I think what we're doing with service recovery is that we're trying to, we're trying to identify these different rings as, you know, crisis ring, uh, essential to health and wellness and in general. And in that essential health and wellness, we're starting to build processes for the public affairs, for that public affairs officer that's running the VAMP, the, the VA Medical Center down out in Iowa, and to give them almost like a turnover to binder to help them process that inquiry. Tim? Yeah, uh, all everything you just said, and I think, but the, the first thing on anything is you got to make sure that that person knows you're listening. You got to respond and say, I hear you, I hear you, and then execute in what you can. I think that what's been really encouraging, especially on uh, VA social media platforms, is that you often have a lot of people who respond for you before you even see it. There's a really good community and really fostering that community, making sure you're recognizing people who are going above and beyond and, hey, I found the answer to your question or this is how you do it. Make sure you make them feel heard and uh, give them some, some social love so they continue to do it and you foster that community that really um, helps with, with those situations. But again, it's all about listening and, and, uh, and then trying to figure out what is the best answer. Yeah, the number one. one I have a little something for that too. Go ahead, Tanner. Yep. Sorry, I uh, didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, one of the things I was going to uh, point out was that as we have just recently acquired an enterprise level license for Social Studio, we are bringing on m uh, many more teams uh, across the VA to include, uh, you know, we brought, um, we created a workspace for the Veterans Benefits Administration, for Veterans Health Administration, for an, a number of VA medical centers. Um, you know, and, you know, we have the different program offices across the VA. So um, one of the goals in the future, you know, once we get everybody in, incorporated and whatnot, will be to be able to route questions to the appropriate office so that they can answer it. So if we may see a comment on one of our posts because we get like by far the most engagement because ours is the largest channel, um, but we may not be experts on that particular issue. In the past, when I was a federal student aide, what we would do is just link them to a page on the, on the website. But now with a tool like what we have now in Salesforce Social Studio with an enterprise account, we can actually route it to somebody. So um, I'm hoping in the future, that's something that we will be able to do more of. 
That's great. I have to, I have to say that um, I'm really happy mm -hmm. that you guys are doing this because when I do these events, mm -hmm. I'll go back afterwards and I'll pull all the unanswered questions and then I'll go like, like question by question mm -hmm. and send it to the expert at VA that I know that can answer it and try to kind of cajole them into getting the answer in some cases. We did, um, we did a Facebook Live on the Mission Act in May and we got a thousand comments wow. and <laughs> it was grueling because yeah. not only, you know, figuring out who, how to route the questions of people and get them to answer it because they have full-time jobs too, but mm -hmm. also to um, get Facebook to behave because it wanted to kind of reset to the first question every mm -hmm. time, you know, you tried to get the next batch of questions going. Mm -hmm. But um once something like what you guys are doing goes into place, it's going to be a lot easier to do that yeah. rather than manually sending it to someone you know who can answer it. Yeah, I'll just add, be, be a person. Be a person. Don't be a drone. Don't be yeah. some person in this big office building. Say, hey, my name is Tim. I'm a Marine Corps veteran as well. Semper Fi. Let's yeah. fix this for you. And that really, I mean, that's empathy. That's, that's connecting with your customer. Right. When, Are you saying we don't want to be bureaucrats? One takeaway from this conversation I've had from listening to y'all is really um, building trust with your audience. And for you guys, that's veterans. And also for us, our audience is, is composed of veterans too. Building trust and having a commitment to communicate. I really like this uh, message. Um, so we're right at time now. We've gone just a little bit over. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. We'll be sending out after this call, we'll send out some resources, some of the email addresses, websites, um, and uh, emails for the VA folks who have uh, taken time to talk to us today. Um, you can look forward in the next uh, couple months, look forward for an invite. The folks from FAA are gonna be talking to us about their Go Kit for live events. I'm really excited about this. They reached out to me, they really have put together that something great and they're excited to share it uh, with the big community. Um, I have a copyright attorney that wants to talk about images and copyrights in the digital space. And then of course we have our in-person meeting um, in April. So um, if you'd like to uh, speak at that, if you, if you have done something great at your agency you're really proud of and you wanna share with the group, please reach out to me directly. Again, I'm Gabrielle Prey. I'm Senior Media Advisor here at GSA. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank thanks, you. Yeah. Bronson, appreciate it. Bronwyn, appreciate yeah. it, guys. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.